Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is Q2 uh, of the weekly Lico Contest 211. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord, uh, and we're going to go over lexographically smallest string after applying operations. So this one, it's a lot of reading. It's a really tricky problem. Uh, if you look at the scores from the leaders, uh, they all, all self that either last. There, there are a couple of mistakes here and there, but, you know, like seven minutes for, you know, or like, 10 minutes for a super liminal who is you know finished third and also super super smart um you know, that means that th there's some like weirdness about this problem right in general there's a lot of reading uh maybe people just didn't want to read it as well but basically the the core part to notice for this problem is that the number of states is actually not that big the the thing that you might think about is that the two operations you can do one is rotate s to, to um by b right so, okay, let me copy and paste this here so that we can kind of go play around with it. So there are two operations, right? Um, you can have the second operation, which is rotate by B. Uh, you know, for the for our purposes, B could be any number, but, um, but let's just play with the idea that this is one because we're trying to think about the worst case that could happen, right? So we can rotate S to the right by one, right? Um, because in that case, then, in total, you can keep on doing it and there's n different ways of doing it, right? So worst, worst case is you go to rotate by one uh, n times, right? So that's the number of states uh, at least in one dimension. Uh, and then now the, the operation, the first operation, it's kind of, that's the thing that I think for me took the longest to kind of convince myself a little bit is that you only need to care about the odd index. You don't have to choose any index. You don't have to, uh, it's only one index. And what does that mean when it's only odd index, right? Uh, that means that all the odd indexes and all the even indexes will move in the same time, right? Meaning that there's no, um, and what I mean is that they're all correlated. Uh, you may think of, of the term like independence. This is the opposite of that, right? Every odd index is dependent on each other. So you can kind of think about it as like, you know, when you move one, like the odd index one, you also move to odd index three, right? So they have to move together. And when you move together, the states are the same, right? There's no differentness that comes with it. I'm a little bit hand wavy here. Uh, there, there are mathematical explanations as well, um, but that's kind of my way of explaining it. Uh, and similar to rotate by one, we're going to just do, choose A as you go to. The worst case for for step one is, oops. The worst case for step one is you go to add by one because if you keep on adding by one, then, you know, you have to do it 10 times, right? So this is at most 10 times. Um, and and now how do you combine them together? As we said, uh, the odd indexes are correlated and the even indexes are correlated in the same way. Because if you, the only way that you could adjust a, a even index is if you rotate it by a even number and then, you know, go on, right? So, so that means that in this case, you can do the first up the unique number of ways. So you could kind of divide the first operation to two different operations in the worst case. It might not come up all the cases, right? Which is that you can break it down to two operations. This is actually add A to all odd indexes. And then we already talked about the worst case. And also add A to all even indexes, um, which is basically what, what this, uh, so this is, you know, at most 10 times. Uh, this is at most 10 times as well if we have this operation, but we rotate by, let's just say we rotate by one and then do it, right? So if you do it that way, you could count yourself that at most, because um, these things, these two are independent and when they're independent, you multiply each other, right? So that means that in this operation at most is about a hundred times, right? So you have a hundred different unique combinations of odd indexes and even indexes and how it changes by the rotation. And then now, so this is a hundred times and then, and each of, the, each of the hundred times you do this rotation of the, of the odd and the even, uh, like you have two hands and they're only odd and even, um, you can also shift uh, left or right, uh, you know, at most n times as we kind of talked about here. I say rotate, but maybe I just write shift, maybe that's clear, because I think I'm a little bit confusing. So what that means is that it is at most 100 times n, where n is at most 100 anyway. So that means that this is going to be a 100 uh, square number of states. Um, so th that means that no matter what you do, no matter how you do it, 
you're only going to see a hundred square numbers, right? Uh, and based off that, I use the buffer search. Uh, you could also do a buffer search or something, but basically, uh, you do these operations one at a time, and and then you just take the uh, the lexicographically smallest string after that. And basically, that's what I did. Um, I put in the initial string. I've set that as the best as the example. Uh, I put in scene though. I think actually. I, I messed up a little bit and that I actually didn't set at, like S should be in here. <laughs> um, but that's still okay because because you just add one operation, I guess. But basically here, I convert it to an array just for easier po for, uh, programming. Uh, this is just shifting it by adding A to all the odd integers, uh, the odd indexes. And then this is converted back to string. Put See if we have always seen it. If we haven't processed it, then we add it to the queue. Uh, and this is this is the shifting by uh, B, right? So you know you could do some maths. I did some math to kind of make it go right instead of left, so that's easier for me to understand. You might not need to know that or understand that, but that's basically how I did it. Um, yeah, uh, let me know what you think about this problem. It's tricky, but a lot of it, like the coding, it's not easy per se, but it's also not the hardest part of the problem. Even though for Q two, uh, this is a pretty hard Q two. Um, and, and yeah, once you, you know, once you nail it down that, um, the number of states is fine, is, is that few, then this becomes straightforward. You know, you have to maybe work out some implementation detail. Uh, but yeah, and you can watch me solve this problem live during the contest next. Slow today. Okay. I ate all odd index. Take S to the right by B. Any number down here. Okay. okay. Is there an easy solution to this? I don't know. Because this seems a little tricky. <coughs> so if GCD is one, we could. You agree. My first search. No. Because all the numbers are dependent on each other, all the odd ones, so you could definitely search uh, or prefer search, okay, is that true? Because at most, it's going to be 10 times 20, okay. Pretty hard to prove on a B, maybe. I don't know.
you have a uh, account. Now we can add A to all the item index. Okay. okay. Oh, this is alright, let's see if it works. fast enough uh, and then I will take T okay This time so I'll be a little bit sad. Hey, uh, thanks for watching uh, this you know, video. Uh, let me know what you think. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord, and let me know what you think about this contest, this problem, and so forth. Uh, and I will see y'all next time. Bye-bye.